So we're around about halfway through this installation, hopefully a bit beyond the midpoint. We took materials up into the space, which is an attic bedroom, yesterday afternoon at the very end of the day. Uh, so we could we could start we could start on the making today. And it's I think it's around about four, five five o'clock maybe right now. Uh, so we've we've got the frames up for these doors which are open frames with a bit of partitioning and shelves in between. We've built these units that go along the eaves, which the eaves <coughs> which will have a shelf on top and this open unit which allows access to more storage behind those ones. These ones we test assembled in the workshop, dismantled and reassembled because they were too big to get up the stairs. I thought I'd give you a bit of an overview on the job before showing you some um, making of shots which will go from before and after the time of recording. Now these are CNC manufactured doors. You may have followed my experiments with, with CNC doors. These I think are the first tall ones that we've done and they're 22 millimeters thick with a 9 millimeter panel so they've turned out nicely. I've certainly been glad to be getting these CNC made because the amount of work that's been coming through the, the workshop means that we, we simply wouldn't have been able to produce so many jobs so quickly if we had been tied up gluing these doors up and, and it's, it's time and space that's tied up on them so with this quantity of doors there's six, two of which are angled which again is an, a, a fantastic benefit of the CNC cutting process is that if you can draw it you can you could make it very precisely to that size so that was that was all done and we we have had we have continued to have teething errors I can't really say teething errors because it should all be ironed out but some in, inaccuracies in how stuff's being cut which we're still trying to figure out if that's from our drawings or from the cutting process but on balance it still saved a lot of time. Uh, other things just to bring to your attention, so we use for these kind of frames, open frames, we use space plugs to help secure them onto a, around about a two inch wide batten fitted to the wall. Got space plugs in there, the angled gap there as well. This is a corner detail which has been a little bit tricky. I find the corners are always tricky, especially when you've got units that meet and turn the corner but don't line up in height because you don't have the same reference points uh, to line them up. So with corner details you're having to think about you having to think about um, making sure the doors open and have a bit of a swing and also just that everything looks looks tidy. So that's that's how we've done that there. The reason for the funny looking units here is we've got some baskets that are going in there and they're the maximum width which we could get which is a meter but the units are wider than that uh, because we wanted to have an even spaced run of doors there without massive scribes um, so it just it just worked out that because the customer wanted this cheaper draw alternative um, we had to put these uh, these gaps in to make the units narrower so they've got partitions that are narrower to receive the baskets um, and we've, we've still got wider than normal scribes here because, again, thinking about budget, we were trying to keep the width of those units no more than a board width. So those units are 12, 20 millimetres wide. Um, and that gave us a nice set of three, because three is always a pleasing number, or six doors altogether. Um, so we just went, we went with that and just had slightly wider scribes than we often would. Which is no bad thing really because then the door which is on 110 degree hinges can open that bit wider before it hits anything. Uh, so on, on the subject of doors, this one, the one that will go here, is going to be a fixed panel because it wouldn't be able to hinge without hitting the ceiling. So you'll just be able to get into that storage and, and around the side of it.
thought I'd do a bit of a chat about door hanging on a, a project like this. The way we size doors like this is we make them four millimetres undersized from the unit, which is the kitchen standard. Uh, so come on up, Jonathan, it's okay. Um, so say if you've got a 600 millimetre wide unit, the standard would be that the door is five, nine, six millimetres wide. So you've got a two millimetre um, gap or, or inset on each side, which becomes a four millimetre gap when units are fitted side by side. And the standard is then that you size for a four millimetre gap on a double width unit, like these ones, which are around about 800, I forget. But the doors would be, you sort of split the unit in half to 400 and the doors would be 396. So you've got four millimetre gaps then, which are bigger than we like. So what we, what we do in practice is we, we, kick, we bring the doors in. So when you've got a run, you bring them in a bit at, at the far right and in a bit at the far left. So we end up then with a three millimetre gap. That's, that's usually what it ends up at, which is okay. Um, the way we do that, so let me bring this around so you can see it, is we have, we have scribes which are sort of floating, so we position the scribes at the end so that once we've got all the gaps the way we want them on the doors, we, we fit the scribe to, meet, to match that three millimetre gap. Um, so sometimes you're working with fixed positions, so here for example that corner joint was a fixed arrangement um, so we sort of had to we had to space things off that, which means that the scribe then to the wall here is the one that has that bit of float on it. With these long doors, uh, these short doors, I should say over here, we had a problem that has happened I think once before, where we were using we were using some poor quality MRNDF. So you see that I'm just taking that off to show you that green stuff. It's the MRNDF that comes from Lawcris, who we like to use because they deliver quickly and we thought we'd, just, we'd, thought we'd try the MDF, um, even though normally we would stick with the Medite brand. Um, we took the risk and tried it on this job and we found that the, the cut edge is so fluffy that the amount of sanding it needs to get to, to, get to the kind of finish that we, that we always aim to achieve the amount of sanding meant we were taking between a millimetre and two millimetres off the width of each door by the time it was sanded to be smooth enough, which meant that these gaps which were sized at four millimetres were ending up at uh, six millimetres or so, which is too big, and then, which is, so, so then, because we're already trying to reduce the four millimetres by kicking the doors in, you run out of adjustment. So the way around that is is by bringing in a three millimeter mounting plate. So your, your typical mounting plate is called a, it's called a zero height. Um, <clears throat> you can't really see it, but it's the, it's the standard for an 18 millimeter carcass. And then you get what's called a three millimeter mounting plate, which strictly is made for a 15 millimeter carcass because it throws the door over enough to give you the two millimeter inset from the 15 millimeter carcass. I don't know if that makes sense. But we keep a stock of the three millimetres, even though our carcasses are always 18 mil, because they give us that extra throw in to narrow our gaps. So on this run, we had floating scribes both sides, although in fact, this, this was fixed as part of the corner arrangement, which we had to sort of get right in order to then fit the units up to it. But we just, we were able to position the unit sort of overlapping behind that scribe by an extra three millimetres and that, ga that gave us the ability to kick the door in, same the other end, so we had a three millimetre mounted plate the other end, and that enabled us then to, to bring our gaps back to as tight as they could be, but only just because we had the, the, mounting, the, the hinges on the mounting plates at their maximum adjustment. So I thought that might interest some of you. Um, it's something that I've, I've had a discussion about by email with, with Andrew Brown, who I saw commented again after a bit of a silence. So nice to hear from you again, Andrew. So here we are, the finished product. This is what you see as you come up into the bedroom. So this is really the main, most important frontage. And I'm very pleased with the gaps 
the door gaps that I got here, they're consistently three millimeters. So that's worked out very well. I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll give you the overview and I will start by telling you a bit more about some of the design thinking behind it. Zoom in on some of my favorite features and then I'll get on to the bit that I think you really love, which is the various mistakes and problems we had to solve along the way. So as I said, this is really like the main frontage. You may be wondering why these doors, these doors aren't the shaker style door. Uh, when we drew it all out, I've got the drawings here somewhere, we just felt, that's to say myself, myself and the customer, just felt that uh, it was a bit too much if all of these were shaker doors and we wanted to keep the emphasis on this frontage. There was also a budget consideration where they, they were willing to spend money. I mean, this wasn't cheap, uh, but they didn't want to uh, spend it unnecessarily. So we just agreed it looked pretty nice just like this. Don't know what you think. Feel free to share your thoughts. But if you do think it's odd that those aren't shaker doors, then consider the issue we had, which was we wanted these ones to have the mid rails. Um, we then just couldn't find a way that we thought it looked good to line that up with this. We didn't like this, this mid rail here, sort of stopping and then stepping up to the, the upper rail of those doors. Um, but this, we felt this was the best height for these doors, which are shorter than your typical wardrobe doors. I think they're about 1900, 18, 1900 tall. So they're in the center. Um, and so we just, we tied it together by running the handles through at the same height. I think it works. As I said before, dividing things into three is quite pleasing to the eye. So we've we've stuck with that, uh, three pairs of doors, because you've got your angle here, which I think looks pretty neat because they both come up to a sharp point, but it flattens off there. And to me, the geometry looks quite pleasing. Um, again, thinking of budgetary considerations, the internals were kept unfinished. So these ones were made like a face frame with partitions scribed individually inside, which we don't often do. We usually do things as full carcasses, but I didn't really mind. I didn't really mind doing it on this. It, it was, it was easy enough to do. And then we've got rails going that way because of the depth. Um, you may be interested. The first, the first design we toyed with had sliding doors here. I was a bit concerned about safety with the stair head being right here. Um, so we, we agreed for starters we definitely keep that as a shallow wardrobe, which is why the rails go front to back. Um, we then questioned the wisdom of the sliding doors, which would have been three, three doors, because we weren't sure they'd fit up the stairs. Um, it turned out they probably would have done, but, but having, having reconsidered, they, the customer just realised that they really liked this look. They found some images on Pinterest. I showed them the project I'd done before in this shade of grey. So if you're getting deja vu, that might be why, because I did a large display storage unit in this exact shade of uh, grey called Plummet by Farron Ball. Farron Ball colour, not Farron Ball paint, because I don't rate the paint. We stick with the Movac paint, um, but it is a very nice colour. Yeah, so we, we, ditched, we ditched the sliding doors, which I think was a good choice, because they did definitely want uh, hinged ones here. And it can be hard to sort of unify a design where some doors are sliding and some are hinged. I talked before about this arrangement. These are the baskets that we fitted as a cheaper option to drawers. Uh, if you're interested in where they're from, they're from Hayfully. And hopefully one of them still got its sticker on it. So you don't have to email me with a question. You can just put this code into the Hayfully website if you want these drawers. They come in certain fixed widths, up to a maximum of a thousand. Not the smoothest running things. Um, saving for the customer, but as often happens with this sort of thing, I say, oh yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll just down spec the drawers, but I don't really take into account the problems it causes me, such as the sizing of the unit, which then led to this gap, which I thought would be enough for adjusting the hinges, it was an absolute nightmare, because I couldn't get even my smallest, stubbiest screwdriver in, um, and I struggled to get my right angle attachment in with the drill, so I had a bit of a bit of a beast of a time getting these doors adjusted, which took more time. Uh, the other the other issue now, I guess, getting onto mistakes and things that had to be rectified, was I realised a little bit late that this long span really needed some support, so we fixed these 
beam like pieces of birch ply on edge um, after installation including here because again these these were not as structurally strong as they normally would be because there's that cut out there which I didn't feel particularly needed a piece of wood in um, but does mean that it's weaker I did want to show you this I was particularly pleased with this cut that was a hand cut angle where um, fairly carefully scribed and this cover piece here Oh, this I knew there was another mistake I wanted to tell you about so not exactly a mistake but I would have liked this to meet tighter but uh, the sizing of the part didn't allow enough scribe so that is as wide as it was even though we fitted it according to the drawings and again deja vu this is what happened on that other grey job we didn't seem to have quite enough scribe and as I described there of course these parts are all pre-painted which gives you this fantastic finish I don't think you can get a better finish and I have I have tried getting stuff sprayed after installation on site and that raises lots of issues like what you do where it meets the wall you cork it and mask it and whatever but with this method pre-spraying um, you just get such a such a crisp finish and I prefer not to cork especially when it's a dark grey that is roughly the same shade as the shadow gap here's another thing to point out so that's that's carefully scribed uh, could be could be better but it's it's pretty good it certainly looks good from here um, we were under some time pressure to finish this so um, this one this one is not as closely scribed but you really don't see because it just becomes part of the shadow there um, similar to that other job you see you've got your join in the workshop uh, worktop just centered on a door gap there same with the, um, the plinth here and quite quickly because I'm running out of battery uh, the other issue I think I wanted to say was that we had wrapped when we packaged these, these up the paint hadn't fully cured on this piece and the piece that is just here which are wrapped together they were wrapped face to face and they stuck and um, left some marks that had to be sanded back and repainted again that's the benefit of, of the paint which we do talk about so often about how good it is the Sailac paint is that you can you can brush paint it um, and get a good result so I think I'll leave it at that because I am running out of battery so as ever thank you for watching and I will see you next time